What is going on, guys? Welcome to the N1 Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Sadu, and today we're going to be chatting about hormones and weight loss. I've gotten a lot of questions about the relationship between hormonal status and whether it's easier, harder, or neutral to lose weight. So I wanted to put this episode together because there is a lot of misinformation out there and confusion on this topic, so let's dig right in here. I had a gal come to me not too long ago and she had mentioned that she had seen a few naturopaths and they had had her on a bunch of super expensive supplements and some bioidentical hormones because she told them that her energy levels were low, her skin was messed up, her sleep was interrupted, and she just wasn't able to lose weight. However, she contacted me because the supplement and bioidentical hormone route didn't actually work for her. So I put her through my intake process. She filled out my questionnaire, snapped some pics, sent them my way, and I put a program together for her based on nutrition, movement, sleep, and stress management strategies to get her lifestyle in check. No special supplements, no bioidentical hormones. So she started losing weight right away and continued seeing solid results throughout the duration of her program. Her energy levels increased, her skin cleared up, her sleep improved. And I don't say this to boast anything necessarily special about my approach, but rather that going about addressing hormonal status before you button up your nutrition, movement, sleep, and stress management is actually going about things perfectly backwards, okay? Now, I know this is just one example, but I have seen this over and over where folks think that their hormones are holding them back from losing weight, and then we get their lifestyle in check, and alone and behold, they start losing weight immediately. So your lifestyle is going to dictate your hormonal status, not the other way around, okay? Meaning you can't just take a bunch of supplements or hormones on top of your poor habits and get the desired effect that you're after. That's the Band-Aid approach. In order to get the results that you want, you're going to need to address your lifestyle first. Going the supplement and hormone route is the definition of putting the cart before the horse. It's like having a rock in your shoe and taking an Advil for the pain. Like, why not just take the rock out and not need to take the drug, right? Similarly, if you get heartburn and acid reflux, and you're taking Pepto-Bismol four times per week, sure, you can do that, but understand that you're treating a symptom. You're chasing a symptom versus getting to the cause or the root cause of the issue of the heartburn and acid reflux, which is likely just some food intolerance stuff. So once you identify and eliminate or at least reduce those foods that aren't agreeing with you, you won't need the Pepto at all. So this is really good news because it just means that your hormones are doing what they're told. They are responding to the inputs, which are what you put in your mouth, how you're moving your body, and how much you're sleeping, as well as what you're doing on the stress management front. The only thing that can stop you from losing weight is the calorie balance equation. If you are taking in more energy than you're burning, you will put on body fat, and if you're taking in less energy than you're burning, you will lose body fat. Now. If you've been listening to the pod for a while now, you know I'm a big fan of sleep. You may have heard that sleep or lack of sleep leads to weight gain, and it's true, it typically does. And one of the reasons is because lack of sleep raises a hormone called ghrelin and lowers a hormone called leptin. Ghrelin is a hunger hormone, meaning the more it is elevated, the hungrier you are, and leptin is a satiation hormone. So the lower it is, the higher your appetite. Now, you might be thinking, Marcus, you just said that hormones aren't the reason why I can't lose weight. And now you're saying these hormones are impacting my appetite. You're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Sleep, or lack thereof, is the reason why those hormones have been manipulated unfavorably. So it's not just because the hormones are doing whatever they want to do, they're going rogue, they're doing unpredictable things. They're actually doing very predictable things because your actions via lack of sleep are manipulating those hormones unfavorably. So there's nothing mysterious going on here. Also, it's worth mentioning that someone could sleep restrict themselves like crazy and have elevated ghrelin, so hunger, and lowered leptin, contributing to additional appetite. But if they still didn't overconsume calories, they still wouldn't gain weight. So this means it's still the input of the calories that are what's causing the weight gain in a sleep-restricted scenario. 
Again, the hormones are doing what they're being told to do in response to your behavior, but they can't create body fat out of nowhere. They need the material, aka calories. It's like building a house. If you've got a piece of land, all the necessary workers with all the appropriate skills, but no materials to build the house, you're not building a house. It's the same idea here. You cannot create body fat without the necessary energy or material to do so. So the reason lack of sleep typically leads to fat gain is because the physical action of poor sleep leads to elevated hunger and elevated hunger leads to more calories consumed and more calories consumed causes fat gain. That is the order of events. It's not your hormones doing anything they're not meant to do. Your actions are giving them direct orders. So the way you can think about this concept moving forward is you are always communicating with your body via your behaviors and your actions. And your body is simply doing exactly what you tell it to do. It's essentially a machine, a very complex one, but a machine nonetheless. Saying that your hormones are responsible for you not losing weight is sort of like saying that your car is responsible for going too fast. You're in control, you push the pedal too hard, the car is just doing what you told it to do. If you eat too much, move too little, and don't give your body the sleep it needs, things are going to fall apart quick. You're literally saying, hey body, put on body fat, elevate my blood pressure, become pre-diabetic, etc., etc., etc. Like I mentioned before, this is amazing news because it means that you are in control of how you want to look, feel, and perform. All you've got to do is execute the behaviors necessary to lead to that outcome. So in regards to losing weight, it's eating in a calorie deficit, it's moving adequately, I'd recommend 10,000 steps per day, and then sleeping enough. So seven to nine hours per night is likely going to be that sweet spot, ideally waking up without an alarm. So if you do said things, all of a sudden your hormones will normalize themselves because of the inputs your behavior are saying, normalize, balance out, do X because I'm taking X action. Now the only caveat here is a specific autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's, which is a hypothyroid condition that can impact metabolism in a direct way that impairs fat loss but it is extremely rare and the likelihood that you're dealing with hypothyroid or Hashimoto's is outrageously unlikely, but that is one caveat to this hormone and fat loss discussion. If you think that you fall into the Hashimoto's category for whatever reason, you can totally get tested and the thing to look out for is having high TSH and low T4. I'm not gonna dig into what those terms mean for the sake of this conversation, it's far too complex, however, that's the information that you're gonna to need to look at if you think that you fall into that Hashimoto's category. If you're interested in applying for one-on-one -on -one nutritional coaching and or workout design with me, you can head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching or click the link in the show notes below. Follow me up on Instagram at n1fitness and friend me on Facebook at Marcus Sidhu. And lastly, be sure to hit subscribe on whatever platform you're using. Thanks for tuning in. I really hope you found this useful and I will catch you on the next one. See ya.